pretty substantial drop over the past month or so. Sure. Well, we always expected we'd be in a different phase. Uh, and we were at a phase just a several weeks ago, and you cover this closely, so you know well, where there was such a demand for the vaccine. People were eager to get their appointment. They were uh, had vaccine T-shirts. They were doing selfies. We are now at the point which we always knew we would be at, where the supply has uh, increased, has, has exceeded the demand. And it means we have to work extra hard to get into communities, to have partnerships with, uh, with local doctors, with uh, primary care physicians, to expand access expand mobile units that are going into communities to get the supply out to people. We have reached, uh, hit a, a higher number than I think most people anticipated at this point um, since the president was inaugurated. The number of people who have been vaccinated who have received their first dose and are hopefully on their way to their second dose. So we knew we would be in this phase and we knew we'd be in a phase where it'd be more uh, difficult uh, because we need to increase access, which we've been focused on doing from the beginning, and continue to increase confidence. We have seen progress in both areas. Two weeks ago, the 10 million doses of AstraZeneca that were being reviewed yeah. by the FDA, do you have an update on that at all? Are they still reviewing it? They are still reviewing it. Uh, we don't have an update quite yet, um, and we're working uh, to hopefully have more for you on what our, uh, how our approach and what our assessment will be of how those doses will be distributed. Well, House meeting tomorrow's meeting, Governor. Is that virtual or are they all coming? Virtual. Virtual meeting. Yeah. Can you give us finally yeah. a sense of whether you're considering easing travel restrictions, particularly to Europe or whatever, for mm -hmm. vaccinated people? Where's the U.S. thinking on that? I don't have anything to preview on that at this point in time. Thank Go ahead, David. Um, back to this interesting question on the um, unemployment benefits. One suggestion the Republicans have been making is end those benefits earlier than the current plan, which I think is the end of September, and use that money to go into infrastructure. Is that being taken up uh, by your side? I'm certain they will bring many ideas to the meeting uh, meetings later this week. That may be one of them. Uh, but again, I think it's important to note that uh, we don't see uh, the unemployment benefits as a major driver in uh, the jobs numbers. Uh, we see there being a number of other factors that have a larger impact, including uh, the pace of vaccination just a month ago, the child care impacts, uh, the need to get more money out into state and local communities. So that's where our focus is going to be. And for us, it's important that we continue to remain uh, solutions oriented on uh, areas where we feel can be most beneficial to the economy and not uh, be moved by talking points. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Jen. Uh, the White House sent out earlier that uh, the president's meeting later today with Senator Harper and Senator Manchin. I was wondering if you could just uh, give us a preview of what they plan to discuss and why those two senators in particular were invited or able to be virtual. I don't know. Sure. Well, I would expect um, the president will have. You already know he has a number of meetings scheduled this week, uh, one with uh, by a bipartisan bicameral leadership meeting on Wednesday. He also has the meeting with Senator Capito and a group of Republican senators on Thursday. So these are just examples of two senators, uh, additional members he'll be meeting with to discuss the American Jobs Plan, discuss the path forward. And uh, I'm not sure we'll have a big readout afterwards, but it's just a part of his ongoing outreach. And then given just what you said, you know, what a big week it is. He has so many meetings with so many lawmakers. Is this sort of uh, I guess like a defining week, would you say, for for how things are going to proceed on uh, the jobs plan, the families plan? Um, is the White House sort of you know setting any kind of deadline? You've mentioned Memorial Day as a time to see progress. I'm curious, you know, where you kind of go after this week, given all the meetings that are, are scheduled. The president would still like to see progress by Memorial Day um, and would like to sign. Uh, the bills into law this summer. That hasn't changed, but we don't have a new deadline. But of course, a number of meetings and the Senate's back and there'll be all sorts of conversations happening this week. Sorry, Kelly, go ahead. Do you get a sense that um, as the President's been at his first meeting with Kevin McCarthy here in yeah. that, uh, that leadership meeting you talked about, obviously the House Republicans have some of their own internal matters going on. Mm -hmm. Does the President think any discord they are having has an influence or comes into the meetings that he will have with leadership, does that affect how he views sitting down with them at all? No. The president knows that uh, there is some um, uh, introspection going on in the Republican Party right now and uh, a determination about who they're going to be, who they want to lead them, and what they want to represent moving forward. Uh, he's not going to focus on that. Uh, he also believes that the American people 
uh, did not elect him to uh, accept improbability or impossibility of working in a bipartisan manner. So the role he can play as President of the United States is to uh, continue to seek ways to work together. And the fact is we are continuing to work, even with the um, family excitement that's happening on the other side of the aisle. Um, we are continuing to work with Republicans on a range of issues. National security. We we passed our we uh, we confirmed our uh, our uh, cabinet uh, in a, a faster pace since then since Reagan. Uh, we're working to increase our competition. Uh, there are a lot of ways we're working with Republicans, even as uh, they're determining who they are moving forward. Go ahead in the back. Thank you again. Uh, both uh, German Chancellor Merkel and French President Macron have expressed their concerns over U.S. policy towards vaccine. They've basically been underlining the need for more exports, be it for the vaccine itself or the components. Does the President understand their frustration? And more broadly, did he, do you think he underestimated the, the negative reactions around the world? Well, let me first say that the President's commitment to a global COVID-19 response uh, has been steadfast and consistent since day one, when we made the decision to rejoin the WHO. We understand that the border, the virus knows no borders, that it is important for the United States to continue to play a central role in addressing the global pandemic. We've invested more than any other country in COVAX, and we're pushing other countries to invest more in the program to get vaccines to developing countries. We're working to boost global production through partnerships like the Quad Partnership. Moderna and Pfizer have announced plans and intentions to increase supply and get it out to the global community. And of course, we've announced that we are going to uh, share 60 million doses, 10 million of which, as Josh referred to or alluded to earlier, will be hopefully approved by the FDA soon. So there's no question we're playing a role. We will continue to play an increased role uh, in efforts to address the pandemic and get the pandemic under control. Go ahead in the back. Thank you, John. Uh, speaking of uh, NATO's eastern flank, uh, the important part of a security system in the central and eastern Europe was supposed to be U.S. missile defense site in Poland. The project stalled during the previous administration. It uh, has been delayed twice. Is President Biden committed to uh, completing the, uh, the project? I don't have anything to preview about a bilateral project or project in Poland uh, at this point in time. The President addressed this group today. Uh, he provided remarks, obviously a group of nine uh, countries, uh, so it was not focused on one particular country, even though I know the President of Poland was a co-host of the event. Um, I can certainly follow up with our national security team and see if there's more to report. Go ahead. We're seeing hesit uh, hesitancy in some areas to resume activities that even the CDC says are safe, you know, wearing, uh, not wearing a mask outside if you're fully vaccinated or even in particular in-person schooling. Does the administration have a strategy on helping cure those anxieties around the country and make sure that the reopening can go as smoothly as possible? <clears throat> The reopening of schools. Well, we actually saw data that came out just last week that showed more than 50 percent of schools are open five days a week, and that data is from March. So we're actually seeing increasing numbers as schools uh, receive the American Rescue Plan funding and as they apply the mitigation uh, measures. Uh, so I'm not sure, but was there specific data you were referring to? Or? It's not just the reopening schools, but mm -hmm. getting families confident that sending their children to those schools sure. is safe. Sure. Uh, this is uh, certainly as we look to uh, uh, wait for and hope for, of course, uh, approval of uh, the uh, of, a, of one of the vaccines to to uh, be safe for 12 to 15 year olds. I know this is something that's on the minds of uh, parents around the country. My kids are not quite that old, but I certainly relate to and understand that. And we will continue to do what we have done with a range of communities across the country where there has been uh, issues with confidence, whether it's communities of color, where there has been a massive increase in confidence as more people get vaccinated, or more conservative communities where we've also seen an increase in confidence as more people in communities are vaccinated. So one of the reasons that we are partnering with uh, with primary care physicians and local doctors is because we know that is an effective way, not just with adults, but with parents uh, to help address questions they have, concerns they have about whether or not uh, getting the vaccine, taking the vaccine for their kids is safe, is effective, and, and is necessary. And that is a program we, were, we will continue to increase our investment in. I think we'll have more to say about that in the coming days. 
Sorry, I was trying to understand your question. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, to go back to the colonial pipeline, mm -hmm. um, if the U.S. does begin to see a shortage of supply, would they consider? Would you consider waiving the Jones Act? So as, uh, as Dr. Sherwood Randall alluded to, we have an interagency process that uh, was stood up this weekend and is meeting uh, regularly, many times a day, about 